Well, championship week is here, and, well, I'm back in studio, so it's time to talk about these matchups. It's time to break down starts of the week, and uh, we've got a lot to talk about, injuries and COVID lists and start-sit decisions, and we're getting into all of it today. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield provides a continuous and visible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology, available at walmart.com. In Foot Clan, don't forget about fantasychamps.com. As the season comes to an end, you got to get that championship gear your league deserves. And they're going to give you a little something on the side for free. And we're talking about a championship ring. If you add a add your trophy. That's right. For the of, league. Of choice. For the league. I'm, or, I'm doing the league a favor here. Well, for yourself. Or a belt. If your or, league is, okay, if you want to do sure. the championship belt route, you add either of those to the cart, put in a ring. That's a $59 ring. And then use the promo code free ring and it will be uh, free. Zero dollars. I love that price, man. So uh, check it out. Fantasychamps.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Oh, man. Had a minor panic attack. Oh, you thought you missed it? Yeah, because I was just, I'm jamming along here. Andy's back in the studio. It's Thursday, and I go, oh, it's Thursday! But it's not football time. Not football time. Too close to the real NFL playoffs for Thursday games. Which tells you everything you need to know about <laughs> how Thursday games treat the human body for football players. Yeah. But, but um, yes, back in the studio, I thought you might go with, not football time mm. as the actual phrase, but no, I went with a a micro panic attack. Did you have instead. the you had the adrenaline? Yes, it hit you. It's oh, now coursing. It's coursing through my body, and we'll be here for the next few hours. Now I haven't been here in person to see Yellow Jason, mm. but <laughs> how am I off camera? But you are very. You're of a different hue. I I heard I'm like a Simpson. I'm. I'm <laughs> I, I look like the Simpsons with this uh, jaundice light, and I think if I shave my beard, I could just pull off Homer as I think is. I, it was somebody said they wanted to hear you do the ha-ha. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, with the Simpson light. This is great. Um, con <laughs> congratulations on this honor. Thank you. Uh, I don't know how a light doesn't go bad by just turning off, but changes to Simpson light, but it's entertaining to me. Uh, someone said that yesterday's show looked like we were the three settings on the television, the cool, the mm. warm, and the the regular. Um, we've got uh, – I mean, this show is jam-packed. We don't have bye weeks anymore. We didn't have a Thursday night preview yesterday. So we have a ton of matchups to get into on championship week. The tilt is beginning to percolate. For yourself? Yeah, for myself or anybody who's got anything on the line this week. The decision's to be made. Right. Um, you know, I said it on the show yesterday when we were talking about Cordero Patterson, like not, not granting anybody an auto start or almost anybody an auto start on your team. If you have better options. And it's like, you know, there are a lot of players whose opportunities are up in the air right now. Is Boston Scott, the starter for Philadelphia is Elijah Mitchell going to play for San Francisco or will it be Jeff Wilson? You know, are you going to have Deandre Swift? back which it looks like he's coming back or you know which takes other players off the table and the truth is is you can't decide right now you can't decide everything today you unfortunately have to commit to the tilt daily mm -hmm. <laughs> well you i mean you don't you can't, if you tilt daily you're probably a human but you're doing it wrong what you need to do is give yourself a little bit of grace to know i don't need to lock in these decisions yet. It's nice that there's no Thursday night football tonight, and you can wait until Saturday. And on Saturday, we should know enough information, barring COVID Sunday morning uh, changes, where you can you can lock in a Boston Scott because you know Jordan Howard didn't participate in practice all week. So we'll lay out the situations to watch, 
but you need to watch when we're done with the podcast at the end of Friday. You, Saturday, uh, look at news, follow our Twitters, follow, um, you know, go to the website, fantasyfootballers.com. We've got news there, so uh, stay up to date. Yeah, lots going on. The fantasyfootballers.com for the rankings and the start sit tool. And then join the foot.com as our fantasy football community where you can hang out with us all year long. You've got access to the uh the forums where you can get into better leagues. You know, we <laughs> I had Did you guys see the tweet from the commissioners that ended up reversing a trade that happened weeks ago? Mm -mm. What? Yeah, I, I wait, wait, wait. They reversed it now. What? Correct. There no. was there was somebody that reached. No, there was somebody that reached out to me, and I just had to retweet it because it was so egregious. And uh, essentially, what happened was, uh, he said, "What are your thoughts on a commission that has canceled a trade in a semifinal matchup that happened two months and nine days ago?" What? Because he realized he hadn't collected next year's fees from one of the teams not in the playoffs that the trade took part with. You gotta you gotta collect the fees or do you can't undo the so, tr <laughs> transactions of yeah. So this became a whole thing, and I, I had tweeted it was unconscionable insanity and find a new league and maybe kick the commission in the nuts. But um, like it, in reverse order, yeah, maybe start with the nuts. But if you're in a, a league like this, because look. It's like HOAs. Sometimes you get a you get a commissioner right. that it's all about the power. Mm -hmm. I can do what I want. This is my league. I started it. I've, I've heard it all. But if you need to find something better, that's why we made Foot Clan leagues. Is because you can get in with people that are all in the same wavelength. I tell you what, man. If if you sent that your your fees digitally on on uh, anything like PayPal, I'm filing a dispute. I'm, I'm That's going, what somebody told him to I'm do. I'm going to get my money back. Well, he what ended up a, getting kicked out of the league. What a coward. Oh, they kicked him out? They kicked him out and refunded him three years' worth of his dues. Oh, well, wait, congratulations. Wait. That's a win. The dude got kicked out. Yeah. in the semi, he went, While he's in the semifinals, and then the, the commissioner sold the wait, team what? to one of his friends. How was this happening? How was this, How are people reversing trades can you two get a, months after? Can you get like a somewhat of a police force to go out and uh, after these people? <laughs> the commission should be arrested for sure. <laughs> yeah, that is absurd. Goodness uh, gracious! I know. I'm telling you, there there is some craziness out there. Power hungry commissioners. Don't be one of those. Yeah. Um. Do almost everything you can by league vote, and then there's no complaining. That's you want peace. That the best leagues are ones where everybody feels like there's a camaraderie. So, uh, let's do some never not working. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, we talked about this on the Green Room Show. I think that that what we are doing today. This is the time of year where when we want to never not work. We look towards the future. We look towards players um, whose outlooks should, like we, we believe they will change drastically um, from where they are right now so that you can get an eye on three things, like just one, knowledge to have going forward as a fantasy manager for next year. Keeper leagues, we field so many questions right now. Are there people on waivers? that we should pick up right now who might be keeper worthy come the time that you got to do your keeper selection. And if you're in a keeper league, you never thought about that. We, we've done that every yes. year, every a year, every year at the end, I go through, I scour the waivers. Um, if I'm out of the playoffs uh, and look, the, these are up to rules of the league, but if you're out of the playoffs and you're in a keeper league, like dump your kicker. Dump the defense. If you're literally not playing a matchup, I go out there and I you're just... You're saying in the actual playoff weeks. Yeah. If you are if you are not actively in the playoffs, these, these are things that I'm doing. Uh, I'm just looking everywhere because keepers come from nowhere. Like, mm -hmm. I had a, a year where I didn't even remember I had this player. I, just, I went, you know, it's yeah, we're going to do our keeper selection. I log in. And who's on my bench... Uh, Mike Gillisley, because he was the backup to LaShawn McCoy in Buffalo, and over the offseason, he had been traded to the New England Patriots to become their starter. Now, I get it. It didn't completely work out. but That's a name like, that I hadn't thought about like, in a while. That dude, really? that dude turned into a keeper. Yeah. And no. it was just a, it was a stash at the time. 
Yeah, th- those have happened. Jordan Howard, I remember that Gilly. happening for him once. <laughs> Gilly. <laughs> so here are some names. We'll start at running back because that's you know that that position could change. You've got to look for the injured guys first. Travis Etienne, early in the year, if you don't have right. an IR spot, he's out there on waivers. Um, J.K. Dobbins, same thing. Those guys will be excellent, awesome running backs next year if they are available. Um, this one is a little bit – he's still under contract, Chris Carson. He, he just re-signed, right? Uh, I believe he signed a two-year deal coming into this year. You yeah, that's, but that's what I mean. It was a newer extension for him. So, I mean, the, as long as he is healthy – he should be back. And Rashad Penny, who's having this breakout campaign, is not currently under contract right. next year. Um, here's two guys that uh, their outlooks could change for the better. Raheem Mostert, not under contract. But with everything, all the health issues with San Francisco, he could very easily sign a one-year deal and be their starter next year. And the last name I'll throw out. I, he needs to. It, it's, it's Keyshawn Vaughn. Yep. Uh, who I know right now some people picked him up to play him against the Jets this week at Championship Week. That's a little – that's going deep. Yep. Um, but Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette are not currently – And Giovanni Bernard. And Giovanni Bernard are not currently under contract next year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I expect they'll re-sign Leonard Fournette, but if they don't, if Keyshawn Vaughn shows out these last few weeks and then they – crazier things have happened. Yeah, these this are, would have been a non – thought at all if he didn't have this opportunity at the end of the year to maybe prove himself absolutely and these are this is like buying a scratcher like you know that the op the odds of this hitting and becoming anything are very small but these are these low probability moves that you can make right now that can blossom and, and become very impactful yeah at wide receivers uh some names to remember going forward whose situation should be much better elijah moore do not forget his breakout he yeah. was incredible. In his final five weeks, he was the wide receiver two during that – the, not a wide receiver two, the wide receiver two during his final five weeks playing. So, And, and if he does happen to be on your wire, that's a move you need to make. Well, I guess it's championship week. But was, he could be back this week, so you would have to do it right Is now. Is that one of those examples where it's like you, you blame – DJ Moore's situation on quarterbacks for five years, and then you go, oh wait, Elijah Moore just <laughs> dominated for five weeks with nobody at quarterback. Yeah, those those kind of prove some prove some uh, proofs Elijah in the Moore, pudding. There. Elijah Moore is very good. Um, Calvin Ridley, if he has been dropped by necessity in certain leagues, um, we don't know his future, but he could be back, and obviously he's dominated. Um, Gabriel Davis not going to be on your waivers, but he's a name that. His situation, I think, will be great. He's been fire when Emmanuel Sanders hasn't been there. Sanders was on a one-year contract. I don't think they'll bring him back. Cole Beasley is technically not under contract. So Gabe Davis is a part of the future for Josh Allen. I think uh, I think Beasley is like they can cut him for very minimum. Oh, th minimum. that's right. So he is, he is under contract for uh, – I don't think they'll cut him. But the point is could. Emmanuel Sanders uh, probably won't be back. No. Right? Um, and then another rookie that showed a lot of flashes, Kadarius Toney. Mm -hmm. uh, Sterling Shepard is going to be gone. It's possible. You know, Russ Wilson has been like, I would accept a trade to the Giants. So if you had Kadarius Toney and then all of a sudden quarterback got upgraded, and uh, don't forget about Michael Thomas. Yeah. Remember him? Uh, Not vaguely, really. Vaguely. Wow. But that's why he, he could just be chilling on your waiver wire because uh, people everyone would be forgot about him. And then the final names here, Deshaun Watson at quarterback. Yeah. Uh, he'll have relevance in the future. And I just want to always, when, when we get an opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to, to talk about the youth being youth, I have to do it. Uh, Eric Ebron should be gone. He had a great rookie year, so you know, let the youth be youth. I don't <laughs> think you're going to keep him necessary, necessarily, but it's important to remember that the youth is youth. <laughs> right, and uh, Jared Cook's going to be a free agent. He'll be gone. Attached to Justin Herbert will be uh, Parham. Parham. Yeah. Uh, all right, that is it for Never Not Working. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulders Scalp Shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, it's time for the daily COVID boogie. <sighs> Dalvin Cook, Travis Kelsey, Brandon Cooks, Taysom Hill, Trevor Simeon, MBS, Ramondre Stevenson, Jalen Guyton, and Adam Troutman all off of the COVID list activated. That's great. Um, 
it's going to be, you know, some of those guys are going to start no matter what. Dalvin Cook, Travis Kelsey, they're going to be in your lineup. And you hope they don't uh, Tyree Kill from last week, yeah. uh, who we know was, you know, Mahomes came out and said he was struggling. Um, exhausted. Exhausted. So, you know, Brandon Cooks would have been my start of the week. Like, his matchup is perfect. And mm -hmm. I think he's someone you can start. But the COVID worries me. Coming back off of that is these are human beings. They're you just don't know which ones – were really symptomatic or exactly. asymptomatic or, you know, somewhere in between where they're fine and get more time. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a risk, but there are players that, that are locked in. Darren Waller was added to the reserve COVID list. So is Tim Patrick. So, uh, there you go. Kyle Shanahan <laughs> known fabricator of the truth mm -hmm. said, Jimmy Garoppolo is dealing with a grade three sprain in his right throwing thumb and has a chance to play in week 17 liar. does not need surgery you liar you liar um I, I talked about this on green room uh last night uh i think i think he's lying um i think that was he's not lying that from it and that that i can extrapolate that from you calling him a liar that's yes exactly but you, only, you read between the lines there it's only based on all of the Lies. history of of him lying. Not just that. Also the medical reality of the situation, <laughs> plus the fact that they went and got a quarterback and signed him to the practice squad. There's and and he did not participate in right. practice while Trey Lance got all the first team reps. But uh What does Mike do when Jimmy Garoppolo runs out there for the first snap? Oh, what man. does Mike the fantasy hitman do? Just melt. I mean, cause it doesn't that seem like the exclamation point on your year? It certainly would be. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just <laughs> Shanahan dunking on you, just and he's <laughs> hanging on the yeah. rim, his and he falls right, off. right down on your yeah. cold dead his body. His fingers actively bleeding as he runs out there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and he, and they just do a uh, a New England Patriots where he throws it three times. Oh my gosh, <laughs> um, yeah. So the the likelihood, the medical reality, the moves by the team. The practice reports all indicate that Jimmy Garoppolo is unlikely to play. This is this is totally a a budget magician type of a move. Gamesmanship. Mike. That if you're gamesmanship, and this one actually like sort of makes sense. That if you are trying to convince the other team that you have to get ready for Jimmy Garoppolo, and you also have to get ready for Trey Lance. Those are two very different quarterbacks. It's not like. Oh, pocket pass where it doesn't matter. Like those you're not are put, you're not putting a spy on Jimmy Garoppolo, right? They are. They would be very different game plans. They did this so, once, if uh, you remember. He he did this gamesmanship once with the Cardinals. Mm, yes, when, when San Francisco was playing them, and you spent the whole week thinking Jimmy could still play. Oh right. yeah, and then he didn't. He didn't. Oh, they did this once with Elijah Mitchell when he broke his <laughs> finger, and they said, "Oh, he's going to play." And ah, he, he but he didn't. He he lied. He lies, but he lies more about fingers. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> From my count, he has eight left to put down. Okay. Just real vice. <laughs> Golly. I can't tell the truth about a man's finger. No. Elijah Mitchell. Now, there's a knee. Uh, limited on Wednesday's practice. There, there's a lot of question around this. You've had a couple of weeks where there was some optimism to start the week with Elijah Mitchell. But we'll keep you informed with every bit of news that we have. Right. It's a super important one because the matchup is great. If Elijah Mitchell is active... I would be willing to plug him into my starting lineup in a championship week yes. and play him. I personally do not think he will be active, and if he is not active, I would love to put Jeff Wilson into my lineup and play him. The matchup is great. Jeff Wilson, if he's active, or Cordero Patterson? I would go Jeff, Jeff Wilson. Wilson. Jeff Wilson, if he's active, or Boston Scott, if, Jeff, if Jeff Jordan Wilson. Howard's out. Jeff, Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. And, and you mean if Elijah is not active, because Jeff correct, will be correct, active. Correct. Uh, Lamar Jackson, and if you saw the video yesterday – Return to a limited practice. Um, I don't know if he, you know, he's running, running like a guy who didn't want to use one of his ankles. What looked worse in the video, Lamar Jackson mm. or the condition of the grass? I, I've been telling you guys about this field they play on. You can't call that grass. <laughs> like I'm no, I can because I live in Arizona. I recognize that grass. Right. We have that for six months of the year right. over here. That's dead grass. But it's all it's devastating to go into that grass because the second you step in it. Just spores fill the air, and it explains so much. I and don't believe you. I don't believe that that is what I think. This is artificial turf that is just a weird color because there's no way an NFL franchise would allow these players to play on dead 
grass. You have the money. Get just grass. This is this is doable. And if you can't get grass, put some fake grass out there. We've, um, we've had to tighten up the budget. <laughs> yeah, but oh, also man. the sixty or seventy year old coach that was with Lamar Jackson looked a lot more agile. Came back <laughs> oh. and helped him run. So I just got word that is actually concrete. That was a concrete <laughs> field. Um, so. I, if you if you watched it, Lamar Jackson did not look like he's going to be able to no. play in a few days. Which does bring, I mean, if you like Trey Lance, you should like Tyler Huntley. Absolutely. He returned to practice from the illness, and if Lamar Jackson is out, I mean, Tyler Huntley was the quarterback one uh, in his last I start. Mean, not, as, not as much uh, as Trey Lance because they're playing the Rams, and I would prefer that my mobile quarterback is against Houston. Okay. Adam Thielen, placed on IR. Season-ending ankle surgery. DeAndre Swift returned to a full practice on Wednesday. Um, Dan Campbell said he felt Swift will be ready to play. Again, this is a lot like Elijah Mitchell, where you have had several weeks where Dan Campbell has alluded to Swift's return. So we'll this, see. This one seems like... I think he'll be out there. I think he will be out there. If you if you actually listen to him talk, it, you know he, he was joking about they're going to rest him after week 18 because they're not in the playoffs. Right. Um, but I, I think he'll play and RB what RB two. Yeah. And RB two and RB two. Yeah. I and RB two. So. Uh, Jared Goff said he's dealing with a knee injury. Could miss week 17. Uh, that's significant. Uh, if you want to play the Seattle defense. Sure. Uh, Cliff Kings race at James Connor will be a game time decision. Justin Fields limited on Wednesday. No starter announced by the budget magician. Sam Darnold will start for the Carolina Panthers against the Saints. Will not finish the game. Is that your own report? Yeah, I mean, I just he will start, but there will be four quarterbacks that play. Anything else in the news category you guys want to talk about before we get into matchups? Uh, just that Elijah Moore should be off the, the COVID-19 list. And like I was saying at the, at the top, it's possible that he is back. Um. Still has hurdles to clear with the quad injury. Yeah, I don't think I would be willing to roll him bike out, roll him right out there. I would not either. Okay. That was today's news and notes, brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. We also want to thank today's sponsors for keeping this podcast going, and we're starting with Rockstar Games. Hey, look, hashtag a sponsor. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Remember long ago? Yeah. Wow. Um, Rockstar Games presents an all new story in the contract. The latest free update to Grand Theft Auto Online available now. It has to be the most like popular game series. They're doing ever, they're right? doing well. Uh, experience a brand new adventure set in the city of Los Santos as you partner with Grand Theft Auto 5's Franklin Cl Clinton. I almost said Clifton. Okay, that would have been a horrible mistake. Yes. Uh, to build a personal security agency for the rich and famous. Who's your first big ticket uh, client? Stop. It's Dr. Dre. Oh, it's, oh, for, it's Dr. Dre. Wait, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. They, Dre's in the game? Uh, Dre's in the game. What? Uh, play now on PlayStation 4 and uh, via backward compatibility on PlayStation 5. Rated M for Mature. We also want to thank Pristine Auction for being the best sports memorabilia site of all time. PristineAuction.com. Get gear that is signed by your favorite celebrities, your favorite athletes, like currently on the wall, a Super Camario, an Alvin Kamara signed jersey. We got it there, and I think back in the day when we got this, I, I won this thing for like $60. You can get signed gear that looks like it is worth, uh, or it looks like you paid an unbelievable fee, but it's an auction, and there's hundreds of new ones every single day, so you can slip some incredible deals out there like this. A Darnell Mooney signed jersey, $29. A Stefan, uh, it's currently sitting at $29. A Stefan Diggs signed mini helmet, currently sitting at just $36. A Justin Jefferson signed mini helmet sitting at just $50. Go check them out. PristineAuction.com. If you are brand new to the site, use the registration code BALLERS because if you use that code, you will get a $10 credit to your yeah, first it, auction It doesn't victory. cost you anything to bid. So if you're like, I want right. to try to get a jersey for $65, just bid on them until you get one for, for whatever price you want. But when you register, use the code BALLERS. Fantasy Forecast. The Atlanta Falcons, 7-8, take on the 9-6 Buffalo Bills. 
in Buffalo. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Bills minus 14 now. That's uh, that's gotten oh gotten my. bigger. It's gotten a lot, bigger. A lot of points. Um, I think I we have our our picks around the office, and it was like thirteen and a half when I looked at it. Uh, the over under is forty four points. Um, that gives Atlanta fifteen of them. So, you know, Buffalo. I know that they've had their struggles on the ground, but you have to be concerned about dependency on the Falcons in this game when they've been given fifteen implied points. When Buffalo's at home, they have 29 points. I, you know, the conversation comes back to the running back position in this game. You know, nobody's starting Matt Ryan right now. And you, everybody's starting Josh Allen. It's a great matchup, and he could deliver fantasy championships yet again here against Atlanta. He, he probably will. But Patterson and Singletary. Oh, man. Where Patterson has been a hero for fantasy football players throughout the year. But... In recent weeks, it's been a struggle. He's losing his superpowers. And you made the point, I think, two yeah. shows ago about just, you know, the season is worn on. And if he his hyper-efficiency is what was getting it done, you know, touchdowns in the receiving game, and it's just all kind of waned. Yeah, I mean, if you look at how he's performed recently, 11 carries for 18 yards, 7 carries for 14 yards, that's – atrocious but he salvaged some of that with a touchdown so I think that you're looking at the passing work and the touchdowns for him to succeed and they're only implied 15 total points here um, so it's hard to bank on saying Cordero's going to get a touchdown I, I think that you know in this matchup Cordero versus Devin Singletary um, who is a very good start he's been a top three guy uh, or a, a, a top running back top 24 running back the last three weeks um two times in the top 10 in a plus matchup against Atlanta I would start Devin Singletary over Cordero Patterson yeah and that takes some fortitude yep in the playoffs uh the Bills defense uh it's been bad against the running backs we know that it's just something that they've been struggling with for half the year so um it's not that there isn't an opportunity there there's just some risk connected to Cordero um, Stephon Diggs is in a very good spot, so you're playing him. He could be a weak-winning type of player. When it comes to the other Buffalo wide receivers, though, I it's tough because the matchup is so good against the Atlanta Falcons, but do you actually have confidence to start any of these players where you know Sanders is back and healthy, but he has not produced essentially since uh, – uh, week nine uh, against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Cole Beasley, Gabe Davis, they're coming oh. off of the COVID list. Isaiah McKenzie looked great, but that was with the absence but of Cole Beasley. But he'll be back Beasley. to the bench. Like, uh, are you playing any of these backup – or not a backup, but, you know, uh, wide receiver secondary? two guys options? No. I, I think if I had to pick one, it would be Gabe Davis because I'm going after a touchdown. Uh, the fact that they're coming back off of COVID scares me. Um, there could be more of a rotation than usual, so it's hard to rely on them. I, for those reasons, I love Dawson Knox, um, and I think he's going to be the secondary receiving option uh, to play. Um, but I, I would stay away from the other wide receivers. Not that, not that one of them can't get it done, but I don't think it's easy to pinpoint in this matchup right. who it would be. The, the last player that's scary here is Kyle Pitts. I like Kyle Pitts in this game. That's what I was going to say. He, really? Yeah, I mean, he's been a top 10 tight end for three straight weeks. Number four last week against Detroit. And this team, what what agenda do they have? I mean, he was over 100 yards receiving last week. That's Detroit. Let's, let's go get him. The record? Let's go get him the record. I mean, this is your number one receiving option. How far is he? Uh, it's He's like, like 130 a, yards or so. Yeah, I mean. More, like, that's not the exact number, but it's right it's, around there. It's not like Kyle Pitts is not going to give you a goose. He's just not. He He's, he's going to go sure. out there and um, – He's going to give you eight to ten points, and if you get lucky enough to catch touchdown number two on the year, you're okay. But when you look at the last three weeks, he's been a he's the tight end six in that span, and it's just tough because the Bills' defense has been great all year, locking down tight ends. They they average uh, over the last six weeks, giving up less than five fantasy points. And obviously, Kyle Pitts is a special. I mean, he's talent. been better than Dawson Knox in the last three weeks. I would. Definitely play Dawson Knox over Kyle Pitts. If you had both of those options, Andy, where would you go? 
Well, Dawson Knox's chance of catching a touchdown is almost infinitely better than Kyle Pitts. <laughs> yes, um, mathematically correct. So I think I think based on the defense, and I, I think Dawson Knox is probably the right play there. Okay. But I, I think Kyle Pitts is a guarantee for 50 yards. And, okay. you know, he had 100-something last week. I, I don't know. I think uh, your your options are slim, and and Kyle Pitts at least gives you a baseline of eight targets and 50 yards. Uh, the New York Giants at 4-11 and 11 take on the Chicago Bears at 5-10. and 10. The DK Sportsbook line, Bears minus 6, over-under is 37. What are your big question marks in this game? Because, I mean, My you don't question. know who the starter is for Chicago, and you do know who the starter is for New York, which is a problem. Mm-hmm. My biggest question is, is there anybody that you would play outside of David Montgomery? I, I, I'm not sure I want to play Saquon. They're talking about, um, one, he, he hasn't really been that great. Um, he's dealing with injury. I think he was kind of limited in practice. I mean, he had three fantasy points last week. Um, the matchup against Chicago is fine, but with no quarterbacks and no offense, um, it's hard for me to trust him, and there's so many guys this week. The the Devin Singletary's, Rashad Penny's, Boston Scott's, the all these wonderful guys that well, I let's would – Well, let's go there. Go to Boston Scott. I would play Boston Scott with over, over Saquon. Regardless of Jordan Howard's status? Yes. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I'm not I'm, saying I'm, you're I'm wrong. I'm not there. That was me just reacting <laughs> yeah. viscerally to the names. But that doesn't mean that's wrong because they're not going to score, guys. They're not going to score any <laughs> points. It's 15 points that they have as their implied total, and I'll take the under. This has been the most inept offense, and he's the, he was a 53rd running back last week. He played 34% of snaps against Philadelphia. With these backup quarterbacks, he got a target. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had eight the week before. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I would play Boston Scott. I, I would not play Scott with Howard active over Saquon. Without him active? Yeah. Like If, if Howard is active... I mean, we, we, what we'll if they get to report that. him as partially active? <laughs> partially active. I like. Him. I would say I I need. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but Montgomery is your is your lock here. Yeah. Um, I'm playing. Yeah, Montgomery's a lock. I'm still playing Darnell Mooney. The matchup is there against the Giants secondary. Twenty sixth on the year. Twenty fourth against wide receivers over the past six weeks. It wasn't like the connection wasn't there. For for Mooney last week with uh you know with with Foles, but nine targets. I mean he nine was, nine targets against the Giants. I would I would absolutely take that with I, with Mooney's ability to break one. I'm gonna give you a really tough decision here. Okay, because Cole Komet is good for forty plus yards in yes. four of the last five weeks. Yes, he is. Uh, he'll never score a touchdown. No, no, he's restricted. It's impossible. Him in uh, uh, um, the Jimmy Graham zone. Jac now, Jacoby Myers. Jimmy Graham has scored a touchdown in three of the last five weeks for this team, and j just scoring a touchdown has led to uh, tight end six, eight, and 11. So what do you do? Do you play Cole Komet or Jimmy Graham? I play Cole Komet. I would rather have Komet because I know I'm not getting zero, and Jimmy Graham, if he doesn't get in that end zone. Now, Cole Komet, though, is he's giving you close to that. I don't know. I'm just looking at the finishes on the week, and it's like Komet's 16 last week, eight the week before. I think I'm with you guys. I just yeah, I would. Do, he's not going to score. I would play neither of these okay. in your championship right. matchup. You genius. The 11 and four Kansas City Chiefs with offensive player of the month, Patrick Mahomes, take on the Cincinnati Bengals. They seem to have figured some things out. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> The Bengals are nine and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has the Chiefs minus five on the road. So the Bengals just smashed and they're five point home underdogs. The over under is fifty one points. That's how good Kansas City's playing. Fourth against quarterbacks, tenth against wideouts, eight against tight ends in the last six weeks. It's but, a trap. <laughs> but I mean it, it's a trap. For Joe Burrow? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't know how to feel about this one. Because you you have two opposing forces that are meeting each other, but the force is it's a the 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 force of the Kansas City Chiefs is multiple weeks. The force of Joe Burrow is last week is is weighing very heavy for people, and as it should, five hundred and four, 
uh, we the, the stat of like he was the third person to throw third quarterback to throw 525 yards and four passing touchdowns. But the week before that against Denver, 157 and one. Now he's had a couple good games here and there, but he's like a perennial quarterback ten. Like that's that's where he's going, and that's when the matchups are not nearly as bad as they are with the, as the Kansas Joe Chiefs. Burrow has scored over 20 fantasy points which when I look at a quarterback that's like okay at least I got 20 um in six point passing touchdown leagues he's scored over 20 two times in his last seven games and he he's been averaging 29 attempts per game and then last week he exploded with 46 attempts against the depleted secondary of the Baltimore Ravens. So I agree with Mike. I, I think this is a trap. I don't think Burrow throws it 46 times, and I don't think he has a great well, he'll fantasy have to. week. He'll 100% have to throw it that many times. And when you look at the run for Kansas City, it's been impressive, but you've played Ben Roethlisberger, Derek Carr, Teddy Bridgewater in three of the last four weeks. And the one sure. week that you didn't, you gave up 28 points to Justin Herbert, and you can say, okay, you didn't have Chris Jones, but that was the first competent quarterback you faced as well. And are you sitting T. Higgins, Jason? No. Are no. you sitting Jamar Chase? No. And it's, are you sitting Joe Mixon? That's what I wanted to follow so there, up there with. So there is a little bit. I'm not, I'm not pushing for you must start Joe Burrow. I'm just saying, like, from that perspective, you're at home. You just scored 40-plus points. You've got all these options that you would never sit. Sure. And he's the guy that gets the ball to but, them. But you would have never sat over, – over the last month, you would have never sat T. Higgins or Jamar Chase or Joe Mixon on any of those. And, again, the, Joe Burrow hasn't been – hitting 20 points in most of those games. Do you think that they can win this game without scoring 40, 50 points and throwing the ball 40, 50 times? I think – I mean, how are you going to do that against you, Kansas you, City? You have to run. You have to control the ball. Like, it must be established and you just melt the clock. That won't work. That's the only thing Kansas that can City's work. Kansas City is going to score a million points. They they could. They they certainly could. The Cincinnati defense is okay. Um, but regardless of, of how I feel about, you know, the – the skill players of, of Jamar Higgins and Mixon, they're all in. Like looking at Tyler Boyd, I'm trying to not play him. Uh, he, he, he was on the smoke fire. Yeah, episode. I would not. I would not touch that. I'm trying to move away from him, but I just, I would not like to. I would not like to play Joe Burrow this week if I can help it. Tyler Huntley. <sighs> That's man. Uh, I would certainly think about it. I guess I have drawn my line in the sand with Joe Burrow. That's and that's it's understandable. And um, so you, you basically you're. I already think, pro I think I'm going to play him. I'm not going to pivot to to anybody with with heavy question marks or just matchup. Uh, Joe Burrow or Kyler Murray? Can we revisit that question? <laughs> that's the decision Mike and I have to make. Kyler against the Dallas Cowboys. I don't oh. want to revisit. Yeah. Okay. I think I said Kyler yesterday. I'll stick with Kyler. All right. Uh, here's another running back that I would play over Saquon Barkley, Daryl Williams, yeah. uh, inheriting a larger role, we presume, without Clyde Edwards-Alaire. It's not confirmed yet that he is out. He uh, did not fracture his collarbone, um, but is certainly injured, and I, I think it will be Daryl Williams by himself this week. If it's Daryl Williams. Uh, Dar well, with Derek, Derek Gore, Gore, yes. Yeah. Uh, Daryl and Derek. Would you play Daryl Williams if Clyde's out? in a PPR league, or would you play Rashad Penny? We, we we talked about that yesterday, and you guys had landed on Penny. The PP, We didn't say specifically PPR, because the, the PPR does change it. What did I, what? Yeah, you just paused after the PP. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> yeah, you said the PP. Uh, yeah. We both uh, got a little giggle because yeah, we're children. Because we're children, and you Fell said the PP. This is a grown-up show. Now the PP. <laughs> Anyways, uh, keep talking about your uh, Rashad <laughs> Rashad P., in a PPR league, mm. uh, Daryl Williams is going to catch more passes, and right? So that will that just that ups the baseline for him uh, in that scoring format where there is PP. <laughs> R. R. Where there is yeah. PPR. But I to me, Daryl Williams is a must play if Clyde is out. Tyreek is back uh, from, you know, he's got another week off. Yeah, so. he's re I, we've seen. Uh, several examples where the week back from COVID has been not so good, and then it seems like one week later they're back to normal. Miami's eight and seven, taking on the ten and five Tennessee Titans. Oh, by the way, Travis Kelsey is back, and he's back in your lineup. And you're, you're what about hope, Mahomes? You're should hoping. you start Mahomes? Yeah, play, yeah, should play Mahomes. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Titans minus three and a half. Uh, the over-under is 40. I mean, I like Miami. Does that make it an almost upset? It would. Andy's almost upset of the week. Dolphins have won seven straight after starting this season one and seven. It's actually kind of incredible. There's been no team ever to put a seven-game losing streak and a seven-game winning streak together in the same season. They're in the playoff hunt. Titans can clinch the South with a win. You have pieced it together if you're Tennessee since losing Derrick Henry. But getting A.J. Brown back, uh, it made a big difference. It's massive. 16 targets, 11 for 145 and 1. He finally looked healthy. Is there any player? I mean, I know D.K. Metcalf is huge mungus, right? Yeah. But, like, A.J. Brown's the same huge mungus. Yeah, very close. Like, every time I watch him, he just looks like he could just, like, flick away the DBs. (laughs) Like, he's so much bigger than them. They learned how to work out together in college. It's really crazy that they were college teammates. Yeah. And then when they were next to each other, it kind of seemed like... A.J. Brown was tiny. <laughs> yeah. So um, what are the big... Like, Deonta Foreman, are you going back to that well against the singular best run defense in football over the last six weeks, the Miami Dolphins? I am trying not to. Uh, we've seen, you know, the other the other players getting involved lately. McNichols saw 42% of the snaps, which is that's the highest snap share he has seen since returning from injury. And the matchup is just is so brutal. This this over under of forty, I think I take the under. Uh, this is going to be a heavy, heavy defensive battle. That Tua and the Dolphins haven't played a, a. Well, I guess they did just play the Saints, and like they sort of that that game is just so weird. I don't know if I fully count it. The offense, I, I, like did I, it, it happened. I understand nothing. that. Yeah, they did put up twenty points. I get it, but. When you're playing against a, another team that can't move the ball at all, and some of those points were a defensive score, I was, I'm concerned here for uh, Miami. I was more like, forgiving than you guys in that game you? because the Saints are an amazing defense. Yes. So it's like, okay, you didn't, you weren't amazing. <laughs> you you didn't but, dominate no, but, the Saints. But I'm saying because uh, you didn't need to. I mean, <laughs> right. But my my greater point was that of going there was. They put up 31 points against the Jets. They put up 20 points against the Giants. It's like, yeah, they their offense in this win streak is fine. They've they haven't been running up uh, against a complete matchup. I'll I'll frame it that way: a complete matchup here. You like think the this Titans game's going to disappoint overall from a fantasy perspective? All the options involved. I, yes. Well, like other than Waddle, yeah, Waddle is in and Brown and AJ Brown. Yes, it, uh, Waddle is in for the Dolphins. I would prefer not to play Mike Kosicki. Like honestly, if Mike Kosicki is my number one option, I am open to Cole Komet. I'm open to pivoting away to someone like Cole Komet or Gerald Everett and Parker. How do you play Parker in this particular matchup? You don't. Coming off of the goose, even though on the season the Titans are, you can target them with your fantasy wide receivers, but I can't imagine you go right back to that in a championship matchup. Yeah this this is a this is a brutal game I, I think it will be defensive like AJ Brown is someone you're going to start we're not going to talk you off of that we never would right and, I, and you could see it being a very rough game because this is a guy who I mean last week his he had 73 percent of the wide receiver target share you tell me that <laughs> the Dolphins with their great defensive personnel aren't going to just like double cover your one good wide receiver but, but whatever you're going to start him and hope for the best any other Decision. I mean, you're Duke. not starting Miles Gaskin or Duke Johnson or playing with the fire there. I, I, I wouldn't. The running backs in Miami have been targeted six times since week 13. It's just <laughs> not a part of the offense because Jalen Waddle, like, is there Jalen Waddle yeah. is the running back target and frequently lines up as a running back and then goes and gets the target. The Las Vegas Raiders at eight and seven take on the nine and six Indianapolis Colts. The DK Sportsbook line here: Colts minus six and a half. The over/under is forty-four and a half. Carson Wentz did not come off the COVID list today with the other Colts that did. Um, Derek Carr versus Sam Mellinger. Maybe uh, Carson Wentz with the you new, think he'll be back with the new updated rules. I expect Carson Wentz will be back. I expect every player to be back. <laughs> Like that's not really a joke unless they are ruled out like or or 
hit the list on Saturday or Sunday, it is doable to get over. Um, you, you don't even have to test negative. Um, so I, I, I expect Carson Wentz has a good chance to be back. I'm not viewing this game as it is Sam Ellinger. Uh, if it isn't Carson Wentz, Michael Pittman's off the table. Agreed. And really, it, it would be a one man to start there for Indianapolis with Jonathan Taylor. It's the if, only one you need. If Carson Wentz is back, the Raiders have been really, really good at reducing the total number of fantasy points to the t uh, to the wide receiver all year. Um, Pittman was eight for eighty two last week, so I imagine you'd probably be willing to flex him if if Wentz you is do. back. Y yeah, I'm, I'm. I would still play Pittman, but it's uh like a low end wide receiver too, like where a ceiling game for Pittman in this matchup would be pretty surprising. I do like Josh Jacobs. Okay. I, I watching the game last week, I thought he looked great. Mm -hmm. I thought this was the, he had the most uh, juice that I've seen all year long. He ended up 27 for 129 and the Colts do have a bit of a or at least recently have struggled a little bit. They do get Leonard back, so it might not be a complete, you know, RB1 type of play but seems like a solid opportunity play. Yeah, he's he's getting enough workload, averaging 18 opportunities a game. He had over 100 rushing yards in the second half uh, last week, so I, I like uh, Josh Jacobs. Um, Hunter Renfro, I'm, I'm fine with Hunter Renfro as well. I know it's been two down games, but he is a chain mover. He's important. He's talented. Um, and, you know, I, I think I would be fine with him in my lineup. Anybody else from this game you want to talk about? Uh, I mean, no Darren Waller. Uh, I I really like Foster Moreau uh, in this matchup. Like going back to that Mike Gesicki, if if you're rolling with Gesicki and Moreau was out there on the waiver wire, I would make that move. Okay, yeah, the uh, Colts 30th on the year against tight ends, 28th over the last six weeks. Jacksonville's two and 13. They get the delight, the privilege to get on a plane and fly to New England. And play the Patriots. Where the DraftKings Sportsbook mm -hmm. line has the Patriots as 15-point home favorites and the over-under is only 41 points. That gives Jacksonville 13.3 points. Are you taking the over-under on 13.3 points? I will take the under, please. <laughs> um, we know what Bill Belichick does against rookie quarterbacks, and we know what this rookie quarterback in Trevor Lawrence has done, which is jack squat. Um, over his last eight games, which would be half a season, um, he would be on a 17-game pace of two touchdowns um, on the season. You could make the argument oh, that, man. you know, we always talk about Bill Belichick taking away your best option. Now, James Robinson's not going to be there because he tore his Achilles. Mm -hmm. So there's an argument to be made that Laquan Treadwell is the, singular, <laughs> is the player you try to stop in the offense. Yeah, Am it, I wrong? I, uh, there's nobody. to. I think what they're going to do is they're going to stop Trevor Lawrence from – being able to finish this game. I mean, I don't see Does any Does he just piece. take a knee? Like yes, they, that's that's their best strategy is try to win it on defense. Um, and that the Patriots have lost two straight games. This is going to be just cathartic smashing. There's no one uh, on the Jaguars that I would start. I wouldn't – you know, we, we talk about uh, Dare because opportunity, volume will be there. And in a pinch, his floor is high enough where I think he could get yeah, six 15. or seven receptions sure. and, and be okay, especially in a PPR league. Um, I would prefer to not start him. Um, if I could – all these other names that have kind of been in the mix. Keyshawn I would Vaughn. Uh, Keyshawn Vaughn or Dare? Dare? Oh, man, that is so tough. I think I would go Keyshawn Vaughn. I, I want the opportunity for touchdowns. The floor is much higher with Dare. Um, but I think if you want – if you're in a championship game and you need the chance at, at touchdowns, it's probably the Bucks against the Jets over – the Jags against the Patriots. And Trevor Lawrence is about to lose three games to rookie quarterbacks. That's, Woof. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it – Lost to Zach Wilson. Lost to Davis Mills. Yep. And now we'll lose to Mac Jones. I don't know if that's been done before. Congratulations. Well, he's, he's, they're going to lose to Damian Harris as well. Last week's RB1 on the week, Damian Harris with three touchdowns. They do get Ramondre Stevenson back. But he's coming off the COVID list. He will be there to spell Damian Harris. And he was sick. I mean, he was Stevenson was missing practice all week long because he was ill. So I and, and with Harris going out and putting up the numbers he did on that hamstring, you have to have confidence in him. Um, they're going to score, 
and it, it might be more than Damian Harris. So mm-hmm. do you take a shot with Hunter Henry, Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers? Hunter Henry would be the first man up if I had to bet on who gets a touchdown. I think that um, you know Mac Jones throws a couple, and they're usually looking at Hunter Henry first around the goal line. All right, Tampa Bay at eleven and four takes on the New York Jets at four and eleven. Boy, you got some real matchups. Yeah, lopsided this week. issues. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buccaneers minus 12 and a half. The over-under is 45. So what, you got a 12 and a half, you got a 14, and you've got a 15-point mm-hmm. line this week? Goodness. Um, and that's a that's a 12 and a half point line against the Jets when you don't have Mike Evans and you don't have Chris Godwin and you don't have Leonard Fournette. So you do have Tom Brady. And people want to know, mm. can you trust him this week? That is the headline. I mean, I've seen it more than almost anything else. Can you trust Tom Brady this week? No, I don't think you can, but I don't know how far you are able to go down to start someone else. This is a real um, issue because this is the type of game where you could very easily have all your points come on the ground. You could end up where you know Antonio Brown's getting his – between the 20s, and you're hoping Gronk gets a touchdown or Antonio Brown gets a touchdown, but it could be Ronald Jones with two and Keyshawn Vaughn with one. The the Jets' rush defense has been so bad, and once you're up, once you're up by 14, 20 points without your main wide receivers and the ability to easily run the ball on the Jets, I just worry, you know, are you going to have any points in the fourth quarter from Tom Brady? Justin Herbert against Denver. Yeah, J- Justin Herbert. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm still playing Tom Brady. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to sit him, but I agree with that game script situation. Gronk is a strong play again this week. I know last week was a disappointment, but you're talking about the tight end position. Antonio Brown's a strong play. And these are the games when I'm watching them, if I have Tom Brady or these options for Tampa, I'm rooting for that fumbled kickoff that gives a 20-yard field mm-hmm. to the Jets, and they get the early score. Because one touchdown... One score from the Jets changes like it gives oh, you an extra quarter. It would enrage of, Tom Brady of pass uh, of passing the ball. Zach Wilson, by the way, twenty two point four years old. Tom Brady's forty four point four so, years old. So Tom Brady is double the age He's of double Zach the Wilson. age of Zach Wilson. <laughs> I mean, that's just it is. I know it's been talked about yeah. ad nauseum, but it is mes- It's just incredible. Like I'm like we played we played a lot of flag football. About five years worth. Mm-hmm. Right. We stopped when? Oh, man. Five years ago? Yeah. And um, Early 30s? Yeah, early 30s. We're like, eh, I can't do this anymore. If I throw a football with my friend for, I don't know, <laughs> 20 minutes, I'm, the pretty, arm, I'm pretty sore the next the day. The arm is aching? Uh, it, it, like, it really is unbelievable what, he, what he's done. And, and, and don't hear what I'm not saying. I think Tom Brady could have a very good game. Two touchdowns to Gronk. Two t- the reason they could be up is because easy touchdowns. It's just uh, the possibility for a bad game script is right there. It's very worrisome. Yeah, he's not going to need to put up yards, so it's going to be an efficiency-based thing. He's going to need to, when you get inside the tip, the fifteen, you're going to be watching with bated breath, going. You don't, don't hand it off to Rojo. You don't want them to get to the ten yard line. You want all scores to come from outside the 10-yard line. Right. That's your goal if you if yeah, you start Tom Brady. Ronald Jones is a great play, and I do think yes. Sean Vaughn, if the game script goes like that, the way you're talking, he may get a quarter and a half to himself in, he, the, in the second half. He gets it, the ball 10 times. It is it is possible. That's, that's a scary, scary play in championship week, hoping for – <laughs> hoping for a boatload of garbage time touches. Yes, hopefully you do not have to play Keyshawn Deonta Vaughn. Deonta Foreman or Keyshawn Vaughn. Deonta Foreman is going up against the Miami Dolphins' number Foreman. one ranked run D. I would go Foreman as well. All right. I'm trying to make a quick case there. Um, Michael Carter. I mean, in terms of volume, yeah. He's a low end. Deonta back Foreman, too. Mike, Michael Carter. Michael Carter. Deonta Foreman. I'll take my, Like, Michael Carter. Keyshawn Vaughn, Michael Carter. Michael Carter. Michael Carter. He had the quietest 100 yard rushing game ever. Ever. Last yeah, week was true. 16 carries and 118 yards. And, like, Jacksonville's run defense is not terrible. And he, Michael Carter handled it. So, I'm I'm still playing him. But uh, while Jacksonville might not be terrible, they're 20th against the run. 
they aren't the you know the Bucks who are one of the absolute best. And until Zach Wilson starts throwing the ball more to Michael Carter, it's it's hard to bank on fantasy points on the ground against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Philadelphia Eagles at eight and seven take on the six and nine Washington football team. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Eagles minus three and a half on the road. The over under is forty four and a half. Um, I guess that line is a little bit surprising with how badly Washington played last week. Um, Washington was one of the teams that was completely ravaged uh, by by COVID. They were missing, I want to say, like twenty player. It was it was. They did not have their team. They did not have their heart. There was also dealing with personal issues. Yes, that, um, yes. Uh, I, an off the field tragedy. An off the field tragedy that um, you know the the coach was talking about. Like, look, these are real people. This is some things are more important than football, and the, it was tough. So I do think last week's complete non show uh, from the Washington football team will not. It, you, I discount. Like, I don't think they're that bad. I do think they're bad, but I don't think they're what we saw last week. You have an Eagles team that is in the hunt. Sure. Uh, you have injuries at the running back position. Miles Sanders is not going to be in there. Kenneth Gainwell is still limited with the ankle. Jordan Howard didn't practice. Boston Scott's the last healthy man standing. And I think he's pretty good. I mean, he's not he's not your prototypical superstar back, but when he's been given the opportunity, he has come through before, and um, this matchup is pretty good against Washington. When you look at the confidence level for somebody like Antonio Gibson, who you saw come off the field and Jared Patterson had the second half of the game after the blowout, and Washington is really, you know, they're they're essentially eliminated from playoff contention. Yeah, like so technically think, no, but right. I said they need a whole bunch of things to go right. And if you look back two weeks ago, you go Antonio Gibson, running back nine against the Philadelphia Eagles. Heck yeah, fire him up. But you got to remember how he got there. It was 15 carries that <laughs> turned into 26 rushing yards. He happened to get a rushing touchdown. That was fantastic. And he caught six passes. If you're going to feed Antonio Gibson that level of receiving work, then absolutely he's still a he's still a top 15 play. I'm just not sure that that level of receptions will be going to him. And the Eagles' run defense over the last six weeks have really been shutting people down. So would you play Boston Scott without Jordan Howard oh. over Antonio Gibson? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Boston Scott has... Yeah. Oh. Yes. Is that a whisper? No, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there's no Jordan Howard, man. Phil, I, don't, I don't think I could. I don't think I have the stones. Philadelphia is establishing it. Like, they have turned into a run-centric team. That's why I'm afraid and of Devontae Smith. Sure. Is I understand that. Because if, if you have control of this game, Devontae Smith just put up three, or what, five points against Washington two weeks ago. When all of the same, you know, and they were home at that point, and all the same matchup stuff was there where Washington gives up a ton of points. Yes. It, like, it absolutely could be terrible for Devontae Smith, but I'm I'm willing to play him because the variance, if he hits this week, is is a really big performance. And we're, we're going to go ahead and put Terry McLaurin on an ice now, right? With yeah. uh, wide receiver 42 or worse in five straight games? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you have to. If you're still in the championship and you – then you have already been doing that. And then Dallas Goddard, what's the confidence level right now for him? Who's he's still a play? Yeah, I'm pretty confident in Dallas Goddard. I'd be happy to have him. You know, all things equal, I would rather play a Dawson Knox over Goddard, but I I'm happy to have him. Okay, all right. Uh, shall we do starts? Let's go. Starts of the week. Well, I will. Um, I'll start it off since it's coming out of that matchup, but I'll go with Jalen Hurts as my start of the week at the quarterback position. Um, I like something on the line for this Philadelphia Eagles team, and everything goes through what Jalen Hurts does, and he's really come out and um, I'd say he's made me eat my words to some degree in terms of the criticism. He's, he's evolved as a quarterback. He's gotten better. I think he could be their future. And that would really open up a lot for a team that has a lot of draft picks. So I think this matchup in particular with what Washington has done over the last six weeks, 
he's so safe with such a ceiling for Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I, I agree. He's he's very safe with the legs, and he could rush in touchdowns. And, and if Devonta Smith does come to fruition, which I would be a little bit more scared of, he would be great. That's um, actually part of why Boston Scott's a little scary is just the goal line opportunities that Jalen Hurts has every week. Yeah. Sure. Uh, at quarterback, I'm going with the guy who sucked last week and is going to be awesome this week. It's Matthew Stafford in Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore's completely depleted. Their secondary is vanished. They're gone. They have they've all gone home to injury. I think they lost another secondary piece this last week against Joe Burrow when they gave up 50 fantasy points. Um, you know, Cup, Odell Beckham, Van Jefferson, Matthew Stafford. Uh, I don't think Baltimore has the personnel to stop that offense, and Matthew Stafford, after his three-interception game, is going to want to prove that you know, that's not the norm. The norm is three touchdown game, and, and I think he'll get it. And my start of the week, it's freaking Trey Lance. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen, championship week. You knew I was going to do it, and I'm coming through for you. That is right. As Andy gazes into the camera, it is Trey Lance time. Houston Texans, you can look back and say, oh, they've actually performed pretty well against quarterbacks. Uh, hey, I said that a couple uh, days ago. Tua, Tannehill. Zach Wilson, Carson Wentz, Trevor Lawrence, those are the quarterbacks. Justin that he, Herbert. See that he was, but Justin Herbert was still a top 10 guy. Yes, disappointing for what you were hoping for for Justin Herbert, still a top Let's 10 go, guy. Let's go, Trey Lance. Let's you, go. Thank you. You know who else was a top 10 guy? Uh, Russell Wilson, who <laughs> looks like a bum out there, but he was still a top 10 option against this Houston. Are you in on this, Jason? I, I am uh, not as hot, but I definitely think Trey Lance is someone that you can start this week. The the legs and the ability, and, and I think that they will scheme him to run the ball 15-plus times. 16 carries in his only start, uh, and that was against Arizona, and he has a fully healthy uh, allotment of weapons. Like, if you Debo Samuel, Ayuk, and Kittle, the way that this offense can run, Trey Lance has to throw the ball three yards through the air. Like, he doesn't doesn't necessarily have to do a lot. He doesn't have to be a pinpoint accurate quarterback with a 40 air yard pass. His team could do the work for him. His legs will do the work for your fantasy team. I like I, that Houston can score on anybody. And yeah, and, and especially San Francisco, their their defense uh, has been uh, something you could target with other fantasy players. I, I think that's what you're going to need is is Houston to score because my biggest worry here, like I, I think he could finish as the quarterback one on the week, so I'm, I'm fine to take the chance and start him, but my biggest worry is because you can beat them on the ground easily, which is nice for Trey Lance, who's a mobile rushing quarterback, if Debo Samuel and Jeff Wilson just annihilate them on the ground, you could end up with a pretty low, I know we say like the, the floor is high with mobile quarterbacks, but the game script could take that floor and make it a little bit lower. So I think it's a little scary, but yeah, he was a he could dominate quarterback twenty against Arizona, I believe. Yes, in his one start, so there there is that possibility. Um, Ronald Jones is my running back start of the week. If oh, I had to bet man. my life on a touchdown from any running back this oh, week, man. it's Ronald Jones against the New York Football Jets, who are just they they call them the most generous rushing defense ever. It is the season, yeah, and um, yeah, they they they're in the spirit. Very kind. So uh, he's a, he's must start. Like a lot of these guys are, we're saying, hey, put this one in if you're having a question. There is no team that Ronald Jones, if you if you have Ronald Jones on your roster, get him in your flex if you've got the two best quarter running backs imaginable. You have to, you have to do it. You have to. Um, at running back, I'm starting Rashad Penny this week versus Detroit. Alex Collins is still a limited participant in practice. Uh, Rashad Penny's been a top ten running back two of the last three weeks. Detroit is the 30th ranked run defense and fantasy points given up to running backs. He's always been good when he's been given the chance. His issue has been injury. Remember, he was drafted to be great. First round <laughs> pick. This is my guy. And um, here's an example of when he's been given the opportunity, how good he is. Uh, I think I shared this on did. Green Room. Um, no, you but, shared it on yesterday's Oh, perfect. Show. So when he gets 12 or more carries, he's basically had – 16, 18, 26, 26, and 20 fantasy points. Um, He's must start to me. Yeah, I mean, he's the in the same him. category as Rojo. I, Alice Collins' availability means nothing to me. And yeah. also, uh, we have a little bit of breaking news. I will not Whoa. hit the button. Will not hit the button. <laughs> Adrian Peterson placed on the IR. <gasps> oh, that was yesterday. Now that's old you news. gotta was start. It? That's Rashad old news. Oh. Yeah. I, that's breaking news to me. You know, it's always funny. Probably because I've stopped paying attention to 
to what Adrian Peterson's doing. I saw some behind the scenes video of the sideline in Seattle, and it was like, it's funny to think about these. these like Adrian Peterson is like one of the best runners of all time. Yes, and um, you should see people and how they treat him on the sideline. It's like Royalty. they're afraid. They're they're afraid to talk to him. Like he is. It's like, oh man, I got to talk to AD. I've never even got to introduce myself to AD. Like, and that this will happen when you saw like Naeem Hines with Tavon Austin, and Tavon Austin has this, you know, like legendary collegiate career too. Right. He's like, oh my gosh, I got to talk to Tavon. Like, I never got a chance to talk to him before. So they go into these teams um, with the. the I understand it more for Peterson than yeah, than yeah, Tavon. for sure, for sure. I think that was more of a individual yeah, player's favorite player. I get it. Um, but Mike, who's your running back start of the week? I'm going a little deeper here uh, to a player I think that could have a sneaky monster game. I'm going with AJ Dillon of the Green Bay Packers. We've talked about the temperature of this game. Uh, kickoff is expected to be in the single digits, and uh, just a lot of things can go his way. The game script against the Minnesota Vikings, Aaron Rodgers can easily have three first half touchdowns against this secondary and then they're trying to run out the clock and they have uh the green bay packers have shown when they're running out the clock they're willing to go to the big man and let him just punish these defenders in the freezing cold we need the yeah need- <laughs> thank you yeah he he can't be the yeti uh he's a stand-in though yeah like yeah when they film the movie they need somebody to come stand in for him. yeah like the uh stunt um, double yeah, the stunt. That's where I was trying to find the stunt double for the Yeti the, yeah. for your championship week could be AJ Dillon. You try to tackle a giant block of ice. That's what he's going to be in this game. <laughs> Just like whoops, impossible. That's that's fair. A uh, little bit more breaking news: James Conner returned to practice Thursday. Oh, so he's not a game time. As Jason <laughs> bumps his fist, he still might be a game time decision. But and we don't know if it's limited. But, but he, he did come back on on a Thursday. That is certainly more. Uh, positive for what do you guys have to... James Conner no we're, we're playing against Chase Edmonds yeah that's a that was a I selfish mean... fist bump yes of course it is I'm very <laughs> selfish in championship week all right so you going with AJ the block of ice all right I'm gonna go with this week's T Higgins because they're playing the same team and that okay. is Odell Beckham Jr. to uh attach to Matthew Stafford there the Baltimore matchup we just saw what the secondary yeah. option did last week against the depleted Baltimore Ravens and Joe Burrow and all the numbers you illustrated with his lack of production until he runs into Baltimore again. Um, Cooper Cup's going to have his game, but that's not a surprise. I think Odell Beckham Jr. gets back into the end zone and is more involved yet again. And so he's my start of the week going into the championship, which yeah. is a strange thing to say. I uh, Look, I'm the anti-Odell Beckham uh, guy on this show, have been for a long time, and I would – I think he's a great play this week. Um, at wide receiver, I'm going to Antonio Brown. Um, we talked about what could happen with Tom Brady, That's and back maybe to they, back for you, isn't it? They get up. Uh, I had Antonio Brown in uh, my DraftKings lineup last week, but I don't think he was my start of the week. I think he was. Maybe he was, but he is this <laughs> week. Um, look, he is the offense. Last week he played 79 percent of the snaps. Uh, in his first week back, and he received 79% of the wide receiver targets. That is outrageous. Uh, what Tom Brady is going to do without Mike Evans, without Chris Godwin, is throw the ball to the most reliable guy he has, and it's going to be Antonio Brown. The Jets can't stop Antonio Brown. Uh, whatever he gets goes to A.B. Uh, and and Gronk. That's it. Can so I, Can I just say on a personal note how – the fact that this is happening is very it, it messes with me because I had you know we talked on the show about can you drop Antonio Brown a while back. Mm, that's right, you had and him. and so you're in a position there at that moment in time. Antonio Brown was being talked about like he was going to be cut. Mike Evans was healthy. Leonard Fournette was healthy. Chris Godwin's healthy, and you're like I couldn't find the scenario where this was possible, right? Because the scenario was going to be like. Well, yeah, everyone would have to get hurt, and you'd have to get back by week seventeen, <laughs> right? And then to have it happen, and I like I let him go in that league, and now I could really use him, and so I just yeah, I'm sad. Well, pick him back up, man. No, uh, I can't do that. Oh uh, yeah, somebody else did that. All right, my wide receiver start of the week. We've already talked about him a, a little bit here, but it's Devonte Smith against the Washington Football Team. It felt like Washington had figured some things out against uh, wide receivers. But they haven't. They've, they've fallen apart yet again. And top 12 production to the wide receiver position 
in three straight weeks. Um, I understand the hesitation of putting putting Devontae Smith in there. His floor is very low, but the, with the matchup, and I believe that that Jalen Hurts will have a good game and a good game through the air as well as on the ground. So I think that Devontae Smith is in play as a flex. All right. Um, I'm going back to the Gronk. <laughs> gronk, 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 Gronk. I think everything you're saying. Oh, no. Um, everything you're saying about the situation and the 77% of the wide receiver targets says one thing to me, and it's trust. Tom Brady throws to the players he trusts. Tyler Johnson had zero catches last week. So when you have Evans and Godwin and Fournette out of the game, you're going to throw it to Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski. So I'm willing to go right back to the well with the upside of uh, a couple touchdowns in this game. All right. Yeah, speaking of a couple touchdowns, that's going to be Dawson Knox, my start of the week at tight end. I want to be tied to Josh Allen. Half of the wide receivers. Like on, physically? Yeah, like, oh, like a three-legged three race. race. <laughs> yes. Um, because he uh, – could you imagine Dawson Knox and Josh – those are two big In a three-legged race? They are Domination. Win, they're going to win. Um, and they're going to win in the end zone. So I, I just think he has been reliable with um, the wide receiver core kind of recovering from COVID and the expected point total here for the Buffalo Bills against Atlanta. Dawson Knox should have a very, very powerful week. And my streaming tight end option of the week, it's Foster Moreau taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Over the last eight weeks, the only team that did not put up top 12 tight end production against the Colts it was the Texans, and the Texans do not currently have a really any sort of a, a go-to tight end. Brevin Jordan could turn into something in the long run, but teams have been able to exploit them there. Back-to-back 60-yard games for Foster Moreau. I think that if you don't have one of these locked-in options, he's someone I would be looking at. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Now, just an update here because I okay. wasn't here last yeah, week. Where... I'm fighting the boss battle with Jake Elliott. And here it goes. Okay. <clears throat> Throwing haymakers. He came back like Cam Akers, and he thought that he had me fooled. But I threw a juke in. And soon he was Hadouken along with the Niners' Robbie Gould. <laughs> oh, man. It's really good. I liked it a lot. I did. I we wish- got the comeback with Cam Akers in there. Yeah. Very, very topical. If only Brandon Ayuk was a kicker. <sighs> Yeah, the de- the delivery was was solid. I mean, you've really come way a- better than Owl. Oh, his was. You've come a long way. I didn't. I didn't want to tell him at the time. Oh no, were you? Oh, it was so bad. No, he's not here right now. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It he's was had great. A, he's it had was a, great. It Al. was. Oh, there's Brooksy. Oh, that's so sweet. Brooksy sitting in his seat, taking all his glory. Yeah. I mean, over there running the hitting the chilling like a villain. Yeah. Drop. Just doing whatever he wants. So, on behalf of Mike Wright, Homer Simpson, and Andy Holloway, (laughs) I'd like to say uh, we'll catch you tomorrow on the podcast. YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. If you want to subscribe over there, you can click the bell. Be notified of new episodes of the show, and uh, we'll be back soon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.